Okay, here's my first punch why the LLC is great. No matter what type of small business you are starting, no matter even if it's a rental property and you're buying your first rental, you've got a side hustle, you're doing Uber, you're doing whatever, the LLC is the great first step. It's the best to start with because it gives you flexibility to make changes later and you need that entity to get your EIN, get your name, get legit, get out there, go hard. You're gonna feel confident, you're gonna feel proud. You're like, damn it, I started my company. It's gonna motivate you. I don't think you can say that for the S Okay. Well, let me just say, oh, LLCs do not save taxes. True. Big misconception. People think, I got an LLC and I'm going to save taxes. I can't tell how many clients told me, hey man, I'm so excited. I set up my LLC, I'm going to be saving taxes. Well, that's not going to do anything for you, but I'll tell you what will save you taxes, an S corporation. Welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Main Street Business Podcast. This is a WWF Unplugged. Is, that, is it WWF? <laughs> I think it's uh, WWF. That's old school. Is that That's old? like Hulk Hogan. Oh, okay. You know, era. I think it's um, WWE. I don't know. What we're doing today is we are going head to head on the LLC versus S Corp. There's people out there that like, they think the world revolves around one of those entities. Well, they both have pros and cons. And we are randomly going to choose a side here shortly yeah. and have to defend it. This yeah. is like high school debate. This is high school debate. You don't know what position you're getting, but you're stuck with it and you got to argue for it. So we're going to talk about LLC versus S Corp. Now keep in mind, sometimes you need an LLC. Sometimes you need an S Corp. What are the differences between the two? Maybe you're in a situation where you need both because what's going on in your life and your mm. business and investments. So we'll hit that too. But critical <clears> topic, <throat> we're of course setting up hundreds of LLCs and S Corps every month at our law firm, KQS Lawyers. So we feel like we've been down this road and Mark and I both have. S corps and LLCs. We do. So, in, Proud owners in, of S corps and LLCs here. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I wore a leather jacket today because um, you knew there was a fight. There was a fight. I had to, you know, put on me, you know, what, what do they call it in Greece or in? You know who wore a Greece leather or, jacket and got beat up? In a red leather jacket, Johnny in Karate Kid. Oh, that's true. He did. This kind of looks like that, but just I know. blue. I, I was going with John Travolta in Greece. Oh, okay. You know, he's, he's, pretty, he's pretty cool. All right, so um, we're going to have some fun with this. Now, our studio producer, Tristan's going to bring us a slip of paper right now and tell us who we are arguing for. Oh, this Brrr. is drama. Okay, what do we get? Oh! <laughs> Roth IRA? Oh, oh, okay. You got the S Corp? S Corp. I got the LLC. Ooh, you are toast. Oh, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. <laughs> it's going to be good. Okay. Are you going to throw the first punch? Yeah, I'm going to go say, yeah. Okay. I just want you to throw the first punch. So I'm going to say, he started it. <laughs> there we go. All right. So all of you out there. Okay, here's my first punch why the LLC is great. Okay. No matter what type of small business you are starting no matter even if it's a rental property and you're buying your first rental, you've got a side hustle, you're doing Uber, you're doing whatever, the LLC is the great first step. It's the best to start with because it gives you flexibility to make changes later and you need that entity to get your EIN, get your name, get legit, get out there, go hard. You're going to feel confident. You're going to feel proud. You're like, damn it, I started my company. It's going to motivate you. I don't think you can say that for the escort. Okay, I'm gonna throw a punch, you know, right at the LLC's face. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man. I'm getting nervous here. I gotta get my Krav Maga going yeah, here. Gotta, I'm gonna deflect that. Make sure I'm a, okay, all right. Here goes the body shot. You okay, know, body, little, body, little, body, little, body, little, body, 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 Okay. Well, let me just say oh, LLCs do not save taxes. True. Big misconception. People think I got an LLC and I'm going to save taxes. I can't tell how many clients told me, Hey man, I'm so excited. I set up my LLC. I'm going to be saving taxes. Uh, that's not going to do anything for you, but I'll tell you what will save you taxes. An S corporation. Okay. An S corporation. Tough. If you have ordinary income, you're selling goods or services. The S corporation entity is the one you're going to want. Now you got to have some net income of maybe 40 grand, but the S corporation is going to save tax. We have separate podcasts on how that works, but it's basically saving you on self-employment tax. Okay. Ready? Okay. Coming back. This is the right <laughs> hook. Okay. I can always convert my LLC to an S corp Ooh. if I need to, Oh. Okay. even <laughs> retroactively. So my little Uber driver's like, well, okay, Mark, I'll get my LLC going. And they have a kick ass year. They do great. They're making money. Yeah. And then they're like, man, I should have done an S corp. Oh, we can take care of you. We can backdate mm. that LLC to an S Corp to the first of the year and save those taxes if necessary. Okay. What do you got to say about that? I like that. I like that. So you're kind of like, you know, 
you knew you should have been an escort. Oh. You know, and you're like, I know, I just want to be an escort party. Well, you never know. But sometimes you do got to grow into it. And yes. that is, I'll be, you know, candid here. You know, I don't want to beat up the LLC too much because we love them, obviously. Um, so uh, a lot of times that's a great move. If you're a small business owner starting out and you're like, man, I got a lot of expenses. Maybe I'm making five or 10 grand a year at first. And let's be real. A lot of businesses don't make money their first couple years. Yeah. It yep. takes a while to really get the ball rolling, get things profitable. You're spending money to make money. You got to get over that hump to where you start making net income. And I, so I like that for a lot of clients who are like out of the gun. They want an entity. They want some asset protection. They want to be legit, but they don't know they're going to have the net income yet. We can add the S election in. But what I would say then is once you do that, you're in my camp. Because now <laughs> what are you? You may be an LLC, but the, under the IRS, you're an S corporation. That's right. That's right. And so now uh, you're on my team. <laughs> that's right. You know, I was going to say, that would be a good counter argument if Matt said that. <laughs> he said it. You're smart. I, that's why I love you. You're smart. Um, well, I will, you know, this is the reconciliatory portion of the fight. You know, <laughs> okay. this is like in boxing where they kind of hug while yeah. they're resting. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I want to concede as well. It is true. The LLC does not save taxes. Uh, that LLC opens the door for the S-Corp conversion later. It creates legitimacy, just like I said. It gets you out of the gate, off, out, off to the races, you're cruising, but it does not save taxes. Please, please, please do not think that the LLC is going to open up this wonderful uh, you know, tax write-off regime that you weren't able to participate in. I was, in fact, at a workshop up in Idaho Falls, um, over the weekend, and um, after teaching for an hour or two, someone raised their hand and said, well, I just started my company, but I have to have an LLC before I can write off my home office, right? I'm like, no. So all of you out there, you know, this is a little defense for anybody that's thinking LLC or S Corp. You don't have to have either one of these. Mm. If you want to just start your sole proprietorship, start tracking your income, start taking write-offs, get in startup mode, start taking... Uh, tracking your expenses, um, so uh, there is that camp. Mm -hmm. You know, you could you could go either way. Yeah, but I like that you put a little little defense in there. What does Dick Cheney call that? You know, a little Pre preemptive, uh, preemptive, preemptive yeah. strike right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. there we okay. go. That is a crazy movie too. That's <laughs> yeah. a good one. Yeah, uh, uh, Vice. Or is it <clears throat> it's Vice. Vice. Yeah, 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 yeah it's with Christian. With Christian uh, Bale. Oh, Christian Bale. Great, I can't believe what he looks great, like in that. Great movie. Yeah, um, he's such a good actor. Okay. We well, should have Christian Bale on the show. Since you got to take some, you know, I, I'm going to make a little preemptive strike on the escort. Okay. You know, or All kind right. of like, you know, kind of confess, make a little confession. Oh, I, I was going to come at you. I can come oh, at you. You, you, you want to hit me? Okay. I'll hit you. All you don't, you don't need me. to, All right. you don't I'll need to give me arguments. <laughs> you don't need to let your guard down. I can take, I can throw, it out, I'll throw another punch. The S Corp requires a, a tax return and payroll. They can be a little more costly to maintain. Yeah. I, I like the simplicity and affordability of an LLC compared to the S Corp. There yeah. you go. Take that. Okay. I like I, That's a fair point. That's a fair point. But you know what I get with that tax return and that payroll? Less audit risk. Ooh. You, with mm. your sole proprietorship, your LLC flowing down on a Schedule C or your, you know, your partnership flowing on your personal return, you know what you're getting? 13 times more likely to get audited. Mm. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I'll take the extra paperwork I got to send to the IRS if I'm 13 times less likely to get audited. Okay. It's not a bad right. deal. Okay. But okay. must you like audits? So that was kind of a. Did you do, let's like audit. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It was kind of a, it was like a defense and a jab. It was kind of like so a block like, jab, block jab. I was like, okay. well, you're down. I'm like still hitting. Yeah, you're still hitting. I mean, you're kicking me. You're kicking yeah. me. Where's the ref in here? Person, you're supposed to be the ref. Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Well, I will throw this out. With an LLC, you can file a two member LLC. So let's say you were even a husband, wife or you have partners in a rental property, you're gonna to have to file a two member LLC, which is a 1065. And guess what, Mr. Sorensen, my chances of an audit risk go down by the same 13 to 15%, or sorry, 13 to 15 times, yeah. or 13 to 100 to 1500 percent less chance of an audit with a two member LLC. So if I want the audit protection. Yeah, you can still get it, yeah. I like it. And you know when this happened, for some of you out here that was interesting, I had a client that had a rental property in, I don't know, it was Minnesota or somewhere, and, they had one rental property in Minnesota. I remember they, they and they were so excited to show me, they had like $30,000 in travel expense. I'm like, it's one rental. What the freak is going on? <laughs> and they go, you know, wink, wink. Well, it's where grandma lives. And we check on grandma when we check on the rental. So it's a write-off, right? And 
Technically, it is true. Every time you go to town and you're going to meet go with to your the Ritz, tenants, you know, where yeah. do they stay? <laughs> well, I remember a bit half the time it was airfare, I think, too. First but they class. were like, you know, the, but but it's true. If you f- fly across the country to go check on your rental property and meet with your tenant, your property manager, that is a legitimate write off. But just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Yeah, it's got to be reasonable and necessary. Well, it, it, still, I mean, you could. I mean, they may be able to argue that all day long, but they're going to... You still had to throw away $30,000 to well, the airlines? Yeah, yeah <laughs> but, it, but what I'm saying is, 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 the, is the juice worth the squeeze? Okay. So that's what I'm trying to get at. You know, like you could write it off, but... The age-old question. Yeah, the age-old question. And, uh, you, you know, you, you guys know what I'm talking Don't about. Don't turn this sexual. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, not, I'm just okay. saying that ladies and men, you know, you got to... Is this guy really worth dating? You know, or is this woman really worth dating? Anyway, we won't even go there. But the point is... Just because you can take a tax write-off doesn't mean you should. But what we suggested to them, the moral of the story was, we did convert it to a two-member LLC. I yeah. said, you got, if you're going to be aggressive here, and you're entitled to that write-off, you might have to defend it, and you can defend it. I, I don't know if you want that fight, yeah. but let's do a two-member LLC. And by doing a two-member LLC, they reduce the chance of the IRS even catching it, an honest write-off, mm-hmm. yeah. even more so. So okay. Okay. That's a good point, yeah. yeah. So we can, we can save some audit risk. <clears throat> Yeah. Great. Okay. Now let me, I'm going to say something negative about the S Corp. Well, I've got another one. I know. Cause I, I got you got to say it. You got to say it. in a few spots here. I You're know it. <laughs> I know what I'm trying okay. to like, you know, there's like some good PR, you know, just get okay. the bad news out quick. Well, you know? you, okay. All right. Well, I've got another one. <laughs> okay. Hit me. I'm going to hit you. I don't, I don't need you to help me out in this fight. I got I, you. I, I got you. I own you. Okay. S Corps under state law have to do minutes every year. Yeah. And so, psh, you know what? I, as an LLC, don't even have to. I might not even do a minutes because I don't have to. But your S Corp has to. So your S Corp, there you go. Yeah, I don't know that I buy that one. <laughs> All right, here, let me. I don't know would if I buy it, it either, yeah. but I just, that was a sucker punch. Yeah. But I'm just getting it out there, getting it, like it on the table. Block, you know. Okay. Um, well, here's the thing with the S Corp. It is true in the statutes it says you need to keep an annual set of minutes at a minimum. Now, every entity has to have a renewal for most states where you got to file a renewal to the state to say, hey, we're still in business here. Here's my fee to the state. And then you're doing your minutes. You know what I mean? Fair enough. But then, but LLCs, for the most part, still got to do that annual filing. Well, we do a company compliance service at Main Street Business, and we've been doing our law firm for years where we do it for you. It's only 150 bucks. We take care of it for you. We do your minutes. We do your renewal for you. So you don't even got to worry about it. And you know what? There's still stuff you got to do with the LLC anyways. If you want asset protection in an LLC, oh, you should be doing your minutes. See, there's a good counter anyways. blow. I was waiting for that counter blow. Yes, you should be doing them anyways. Yep. Now, that is a, that is a misconception, though, because you'll see a lot of people online, oh, do the LLC because you don't have to do annual minutes. No, when people get sued and you're trying to say, hey, you can't sue me, you can only sue the LLC, there becomes a time where the, the plaintiff might say, ah, I want to get to your personal assets. I want to mm-hmm. make sure you really treated this LLC like a separate business. What do people do that have a real business? They file, they do minutes once yeah. a year. Yeah, and, and that, I know, I admit. in the cases, that'll come out. I knew that that was a long shot, you know. Okay. I'm, I'm, you may have deflected that punch <laughs> because uh, just because your dentist... Uh, doesn't require you to floss doesn't mean you shouldn't floss. Yeah. And so same story, just because the state of Arkansas doesn't require you to do minutes for your LLC, but they do for corporations doesn't mean you're off the hook. Yeah. And you know, nine out of 10 lawyers recommend you do minutes once a year for your LLC. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, let's do the dentist. Yeah. And that other lawyer, <laughs> I mean, he's a moron, you know, let's be honest. You know? <laughs> that's true. That's true. So, um, you know, um, that, uh, is such a good point. We need to at least make that for everybody, um, for both the LLC and S Corp. Sorry, a little digression, because whether you do an LLC or S Corp, both, number one purpose, before we get to the tax issue is, is to create that barrier of protection and amenity, possibly some uh, privacy, possibly tax savings. But number one, first and foremost, is you're creating that veil of protection. So we both have to admit, I think, that the Setup has to be proper. Minutes every year have to be proper. Make sure you're paying the fees to the state. And we go back to that company maintenance program. Little uh, spoiler alert, he- heads up. Next week, we may be talking about that a little more in depth. And there's a special coming, people. 
you may need to get your entity cleaned up. So yeah, analyze gonna... your business structure. Did you do it right? Mm-hmm. Maybe you need some new stuff, an improvement, a tune up. We don't know. We might have a special for that. Yeah. Um, okay, you still have an exposed well, area I know that I'm I missing. Got some more exposed areas, but I like to just get it out on the table okay. so I don't have to like you know take the punch. Yeah, so I don't have to take the punch. Okay, all right. What do you got? What are you feeling awkward about? S corps just aren't great for partnerships. Ooh, when you got partners, we don't love. I don't love having partners in an S corp. I got an S corp. Mark's got an S corp. We do not have one S corp. We actually use an LLC. We use a limited liability partnership for our law yep. firm, and that is the the partnership entity that receives the income, pays the employees, pays all the expenses, and then it sends profits down to Mark's S corp, and then it sends profits down to my S corp. And then we're doing our own thing on our S corps because S corps are clunky for partnerships. Mm. How much payroll are you taking? How much profit are you taking on the K one? The tax strategy of saving on self employment tax can sometimes get clunky. Plus, we just like have our own entity to do our own things. I want to buy a laptop, you know. Um, Mark doesn't want to. Yeah. We can well, hold on. Now, let me business. throw this out. We're both terrible fighters. <laughs> because it's embarrassing that you had to expose yourself there. So I'm going to, okay, I'm going to meet you quid pro quo here. You could have thrown a couple of fast punches. Well, okay, here's the, here, here's the, here's the thing. On. Matt is correct. We do not want to use an escort for a partnership. And I was going to say uh, the, the drawback of an LLC in a partnership is there is no ability to save on self-employment tax. So don't take Matt's statement that, oh, use LLCs for partnerships is the get all end all yeah. because it's not. I have to concede and say yeah. layer two needs to be that S corp level. So I guess S corp and LLC change have, teams there. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe we're both lovers, not fighters. Yeah. Well, we, we want to get along. LLCs and yeah. S corps can play together. I tell you what it is. The reality is, is it's not LLC versus S corp. It's when to use one in the right situation. Mm. They can be in harmony. They're not, a, they're not against each oh, other, man. and they can be used together. Hey, can we cue up a little Karen <laughs> Carpenter? Can you can we play? <laughs> da, 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 da. You know, a little Tommy, was it Tommy Boy? You know, they're driving in the car, singing a little <laughs> Karen Carpenter. Oh, that's, I don't know that song. But <laughs> okay, we're going to get it. We've got to get the studio on that. Yeah, it's Tommy, Dirt, you know. Okay, anyway, so <laughs> we're having a love fest now. We went from Pretty fighting much, yeah. to, yeah. We're Apollo Creed and Rocky hugging after. So grateful for the fight. What if there was a world where LLCs and S-Corps could live together? Oh, man. In perfect so harmony. In perfect <laughs> harmony. <laughs> Let's feed the world. Okay, now. All right. A couple other points here. Okay, I want to I get another jab in here. So I think the LLC is nice because here's an important point, people. When you set up your LLC with the ability to change the character later to an S-Corp if you need it, the LLC name does not change. You may still be Green Tree Enterprises LLC, yeah. and then behind the scenes, you're now an S-Corp. Your EIN stays the same. Your company name stays the same. Your bank account stays yeah. the same. You don't even need to tell the bank. And so um, where, this hap- where this is helpful, and really there's many of you listening or watching here on YouTube, if you're a brand new business owner, and you're not sure what your income level is going to be this year, in 2023, pull the trigger now. Get the LLC going. Our attorneys will help design your trifecta, put it in perfect harmony for the future. Then later in the year, when you start making money, we can backdate it into an S-Corp. If you don't have an LLC now, you can't backdate. And so that that LLC, it becomes mm-hmm. S-Corp insurance. Yeah, I like to call it that. I like that. So... Once again, you can you can get over to the cool party, the escort party. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. True. Um, well, let's. This is I'm I'm coming on your team for a moment here, because okay. I got I'm run out of escort arguments. Because the big one is really saving on self employment tax. Mm. That is why you do an escort. But you know what? If you got rental properties, do you need that? You don't pay self employment tax on rental properties, anyways. Why get an S corp in the mix? Also, S corps have loss restrictions on rental properties, so yeah. we love LLCs for rental properties. So, for any of you real estate investors that are buying buy and hold real estate, you're not even thinking S corp. You're in the LLC lane. You need it for asset protection, um, and you, you're out of it. You don't have self employment tax. Anything. You're just paying income tax on the rental yeah. income. Um, and if you don't, you know, obviously you're taking all your write offs and depreciation. And when you're selling the property, you have capital gain income. No self-employment tax, Medicare on that either. You know, I'm really disappointed. I thought I left myself exposed. I set yeah. you up for a punch. I left, I left oh. down my, I put down my guard for a moment. 
Is this this is second edition? Yeah. Okay, which chapter is on four? Oh, chapter nineteen. 19. This is Matt Sorensen's book. Yeah, his playbook for fighting. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pull out the his own playbook, chapter nineteen. Mm-hmm. Self directed solo 401ks are based on your payroll for maximum efficiency. So I thought you were going to go with mm-hmm. quoting your own book. Having an S corporation yeah. is ideal for the solo 401k, so you can get the maximum contribution. I don't know. I just you fell into my trap there right in the last round. I was like on the ropes and you <laughs> came right in. <laughs> Did I set myself up? <laughs> so I totally set yourself up. And here I'm coming right through. No, okay. um, love that. Great point. Um, and most of our clients that are doing a solo 401k, we have thousands of them here at Directed IRA. We set them up in the law firm with the plan, handle the accounts at Directed IRA. Great one-two punch there. More boxing analogies. Uh, But um, yeah, that's the ideal entity. So for, and that's like, for any of you solopreneurs making 40K or more net a year, the S Corp is your perfect entity and the solo 401k is your perfect retirement plan. That's a great combo. We have thousands of clients Mm. in that structure. And you don't want to do that with an LLC. You don't because your, your, your match from the company is going to be less with an LLC solo. Because you can't take a W-2 from an LLC unless you have the S election. Mm-hmm. So the, you get a 5% increased bump in your solo 401k match once you're an S Corp. And so that's kind of the little subtle trick. And a lot of old school accountants forget that, that the solo 401k or the SEP really re- equates to a 20% match. Yeah. Where with the solo 401k and an S Corp, you get the 25% match. So it's, yeah. it's, it's just powerful. You know what we need to still do, though, that we haven't done yet? We need to beat up the C Corp. Oh my hell! You know, there, there, this is a when I'm on the Nacho same Libre, team. Throw in someone in. Let's tag team the C Corp. Yeah, there we get the C Corp. Because I just want to make sure. Some of you might be like, "What about the C Corp, guys?" Yeah. Throw, okay. Are you like going to be a publicly traded company? Do you have to be a C Corp for your business? Don't be a C Corp. You're going to pay more tax, double taxation. You're going to pay corporate tax. They're going to pay tax at the individual level. That tax rate is higher than any individual bracket. So just avoid the C-Corp. Never do it for real estate. You're crazy. Every every year or two, I'd say it's probably every like six months, we run into a client that has a lot of real estate and, an, and a C-Corporation. And you know what? We're like the 100th law firm or tax professional they've called to figure out how to get out of it because yeah. they know it was the dumbest thing they've ever done. Yeah, and, and they got taken is. advantage of. Usually it wasn't even their own idea. They got sold it. So the C-Corp's kind of like that fighter they throw in the ring and and we just get a beat up on them. Throw, <laughs> yeah. me, throw me a folding chair. I'll just hit it over their yeah. head. You know, let's just <laughs> tag team them. Um, now here, here's an, he important, never wins, you know, he never just always gets beat up. And okay. now yeah. we're going to come up together with the perfect plan here in a moment. That's going to be the climax of the show. So don't go anywhere. Some of you might be like, I don't know if I like this format. Well, hopefully, you know, maybe you learn something new here. Let me throw out, um, another, uh, interesting point. When you start to look at this dynamic between the LLC and the S Corp, <sighs> I forgot what I was going to say, <laughs> to be honest. The trifecta? Uh, we got to get there. I, no. I had a really insightful comment. Okay, anyway. Well, I, I think both of them are tools that can be used in different instances. Um, and so... Oh, I remember now. And so we'll by beating them up, I hope you can see some of the weaknesses, benefits, and limitations of the different entities. That was the purpose of all this. Yeah. You know, yeah. not to like, you know... Make, okay. I okay. remember what I was going to say. Okay. I got to remember. I bought what? you some time there a little bit. Yeah, you bought okay. me some time. Right. Maybe our, our studio... The producer just doesn't take the time to edit that out. Maybe he will. So, okay, here, here's <laughs> where it, I was going to go. <laughs> On the C-Corp point. Now, some of you that have been following us know that uh, this year we've launched the Main Street Certified Tax Pro Network, where we are helping train enrolled agents, CPAs, financial advisors, business consultants, attorneys around the country on real world street smarts tax strategies. There's no one else out there doing that. This is a Main Street CTA program, Certified Tax Advisor Program. You're going to love it. Do you know what we talked about? Tuesday in our weekly training. Ooh. When you join the program, you get a weekly training where we all collaborate, the attorneys and CPAs and enrolled agents. The C Corp really was the highlight when it comes to medical expenses. Mm. There's a lot of benefits when you have a C Corp with a couple or a single individual. Maybe they have employees in their main company. They've got a discrimination issues uh, when it comes to not including employees in an HRA. The C Corp can be a really nice escape hatch for someone that has a lot of medical expenses and they're single. 
and they want to try to write those off. The C Corp is that one uh, place where it really has a, a, a good spot to be. Yeah. So I don't. It's got it's got its limited scenarios, but mm-hmm. you know what? For the typical Main Street business owner, entrepreneur, small business owner, real estate investor, C Corp is not your game. Yeah. You're going to pay more tax. It's it's just <clears throat> it's not your game. And the problem is, is people get out there googling and they're like. Well, when Uber started, they became a C Corp, you know, everybody thinks they're going to be the next Uber. It's like, okay, well, they had an intent to be a publicly traded company. They had all these, this startup funds that required them to be a C Corp. So, um, so just be careful in getting like the big fortune 500 advice of what your entity should be. That's not for you. That's not small business. You're not going to get all those benefits that they're going to get. Um, and they're doing it a lot of times for other reasons. So Hmm. LLCs, S Corps, even though we are fighting over them here, that's what you're going to be using in small in the small business entrepreneurial space. Yeah. So I'm going to, I think we can bring this around here. I want to, here's the, from my pers- position, I think we've argued a lot of the hot button topics. We could get into some technical issues maybe, but here's the, the main takeaway. I would say 80, I want, I'd like to say 90, but I'm going to go with 80% of our clients use the one, two punch to bring it around to our boxing analogy. Mm-hmm. They have an S corp, for all of their ordinary income operations, online sales, consulting, affiliate work, products, services, and S Corp is the perfect fit for that. Maybe a solo 401k is a little added benefit. And then on the right side of the equation, they have their LLC for the rental properties. You might be using an LLC with your Roth IRA or your 401k to do some additional investing. The LLC, oh, I should have used that one. The Mm -hmm. LLC can be used as a uh, structure with retirement accounts. The, the fight's already over, so oh, yeah. you know, yeah, that can't was a, throw a punch after the final bell's ring. You, do, you did, and in, in, what was the movie with Clint Eastwood, and he directed, what's her name, that she does all oh, the Hillary's, Capital One? Uh, Hillary Swank? Swank, yeah. Yeah, she'd won the fight, and that yeah. girl punched her, so, and she broke her neck on the chair. Oh, Remember yeah, that? That was yeah, terrible yeah. end of the show. I hated it. What was the name Million of Million Dollar show? Baby? Million Dollar Baby. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry if you haven't seen that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally ruined it. <laughs> totally ruined it. Well, the movie is 20 years old, whatever. Okay, so here's the point. People, if you're a business owner, if you're an investor, if you're needing someone to bring this all together, that's what our tax lawyers do at KKS Lawyers, our certified tax advisor network. They're trained on this to help work in conjunction with the lawyers to bring together your plan. You want that one-two punch. That's what's going to make you most effective in that bar fight this weekend, Tristan. You need the one-two. Because, you know, <laughs> that, that bar fight's going to happen. you got to go, boom, boom one-two. Yeah, you so need both. You, you need both. both. You need the S Corp and yeah. LLC. I'd say 80% of our clients use both. Yeah. I'm yeah, really you need I, – I love it. And um, many of you know the trifecta. And I just if you're like, man, this is my first time hearing these guys and you're learning about the business entities, I mean, we have separate episodes just on the LLC, separate episodes just on the S Corporation, separate episodes on what we call the trifecta, which is understanding how they work together, when to use which, separating your business – I'm an operations from your assets and investments, coordinating your estate plan. So there's lots of important ways to think about these and how they come together. So just know we got a lot more content on that. If you just kind of, this is your first exposure to us. Oh, and you know what we did um, this morning, we do two trainings a week for our certified network. This morning, one of the questions um, a CPA had asked, I mean, this is where really you think all of us accountants and lawyers, we learn this in school or in the CPA exam or the bar Mm -hmm. exam. You don't. You learn it out on the streets. Well, we're the only ones <laughs> teaching street fight techniques, uh, techniques out here. So um, uh, on our call this morning, a CPA asked, well, I didn't think a revocable living trust could own an S Corp. But mm-hmm. yes, it can. The IRS is allowed for a see-through grantor trust, which an S Corp is. Even on the 2553, we'll list the trust with the... Uh, one of the spouse's social security numbers on the second page of the 2553. So for you accountants out there, that trifecta is really comes together with that revocable living trust, owning the S Corp and the LLC, bringing it all together. Cause I hate to tell you, someday you're gonna die. Your clients are gonna die. And you don't wanna have a train wreck with a disorganized business structure. So um, make sure you in, bring it all together. And if you need a console, our links are down below. The lawyers are out maybe a week and a half, but they'll build a plan for 2023. Get a plan for 2023.
Yeah. Well, thanks guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Main Street Business Podcast. Make sure you're subscribed. You give it five stars. You like wherever you're at. Do something positive about the show. Yeah. Don't be a fighter. You love her. You love her. Yeah. Let's make the world a better place. What was it? We're going to feed the world or? Don't yeah. I, I don't I, know. It was some song we quoted. Oh, we're, we're, we're a disaster. We're dwindling here. At yeah. The we're end, going but... down in flames here. Yeah. <laughs> It's a million dollar baby. I'm about ready to hit my head on the chair. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week for another episode of the Main Street Business Podcast. Keep living the dream.